okay let's start today's session so hello everyone so as we have been discussing about probability and it has been i think uh, one month or so since we have been discussing about it so let me summarize what we have seen so far so we have discussed about what probability is okay then after that we saw what terminology is pro in probability what are the terms that we use axiom the probability then we saw the main important topics i'll just write i'll i we saw the conditional probability Okay, we saw conditional probability, independence of these events, and different uh, different things in these. And after that, we shifted our gears towards random variables. Okay, this was the topic of the discussion that we have been discussing, I think, since last four or five sessions. So what I was saying is, we started with this probability, and then we uh, went into conditional probability, and did a lot of topics. So that landed us at random variables. So we have been discussing random variables since last few sessions. So if you see this random variables, so in random variables we had discrete random variable, and then we had continuous random variable. Okay. See the see the mind map how I'll form it. So in this discrete random variable, we had saw different types of random variables. Okay, there are different types. I'll just write types over here. And also here will be some there will be some types of continuous random variables. So the important concept related to discrete random variable was probability mass function, okay? And here it's called as probability density function. Here we'll have CDF cumulative distribution function. Also we'll have CDF over here. There will be a lot of types here also. There will be a lot of types here also. So both of these there are con some concepts applicable, which are concepts like variance, concepts like expectation. Okay, that's all there is to read about random variables. Okay, you should know what a random variable is, and then should you should know that there are two types of random variables: that is, discrete random variable and continuous random variable. So then, within the types, there are a lot of types of discrete random variable. I think we have discussed few of them: uh, Bernoulli binomial random variable. We saw uniform random variable. There are something called as Poisson random variable, beta distribution. There are a lot of distributions in here. Okay, and then in here you will see we'll we'll uh, we'll probably read about uniform random variable. We'll see normal random variable, and that will be our focus. This is our main focus. Normal random variables or normal distribution will be our focus. That's why we are doing this uh, so much. And then we here we discussed what is called a PMF, probability mass function. That is defined for these random variables. And here we'll uh, describe what's called as a PDF, probability density function. Then both of these there is a function called a CDF. Okay. And then we if you know all of these now we wanted to we wanted some tools. Or some numbers which can summarize these random variables. Somehow we should get the summary of random variables. So we involved two concepts, which is called one is called expectation and one is called variance. And in the previous session we discussed about what an expectation is. Okay. How many of you got this map now? Map of at least random variables. Okay. If you know this map, it's easy. Sort of you make this on the paper and then see this sort of table of content. Something table of content like this, and then you can just fill in the details. Okay, now we are over here expectations, and we saw the definition of expectations. The last topic that there is in the expectation is called as linearity of expectations. Linearity of expectations. It it basically says that the expectations they are linear. So what is meaning of the linearity? So let's suppose if you have a random variable, you have some random variable x, something like this. Okay, let's suppose you multiply it with a. Okay, and then you add something at something like b. Okay, initially, if we had expectation, it would be x e of x. Okay, now if you did something like this, okay, we want to see how will the expectation get changed. So, what should be the e of a x plus b? What should be the expectation of this new number now? So, it could be like something like this. Let's suppose you had x. X was uh, the salary. Okay, x was the salary that person uh, that a person was getting. Now, company decided. Okay, we'll get we'll give twice salary now. We'll increase the salary. We'll double the salary and then give some bonus. Okay. We'll, we'll double the salary and give some bones. Now you know that some of expectation will also change. But how will the expectation change? Okay, again coming to the salary. Let's suppose company is giving a salary to the employees. Okay, each employee will get some salary. And this uh, X is a random variable which can be thought of uh, salary of an employee. Of an employee. So what is this E of X representing then? E of X says expectation of the salary what should be the average salary if we have all the data with us what will be the average salary it will just give us a ballpark figure in this company how good uh, uh, a person is getting paid in this company let's suppose google will have high expectation google will have let's suppose a salary of 30 40 lakhs 
एवरेज है एक्सपेक्टेशन ऑफ एक्स विल भी थर्टी फोर्टी लैक्स देर विल पीपल विल गेट मोर देन टू करोर और समथिंग सिमिलरली इफ यू आर फ्रॉम ए स्मॉल कंपनी से कंपनी वाई कंपनी ए कंपनी बी सो देर प्रॉब्ली द एक्सपेक्टेशन वैल्यू विल भी क्वाइट लेस इट विल भी सम फोर एल पी ए फाइव एल पी ए समथिंग लाइक दैट सो द एक्सपेक्टेशन बेसिकली इफ यू हैव दिस एक्स नंबर विच इज ए सैलरी ऑफ ए गिवन एम्प्लॉय इन ए कंपनी दिस टेल्स यू हाउ एन एम्प्लॉय इज एट एवरेज वट इज द सैलरी दैट पीपल गिव सो वट आई एम सींग इज नाउ इफ द कंपनी डिसाइड दैट विल डबल द सैलरी विल डबल द सैलरी ऑफ एन एम्प्लॉय एंड एड सम बोन्स ऑल्सो सो हाउ विल द एक्सपेक्टेशन गेट चेंज ओके वी आर कंसर्न अबाउट दिस नाउ ओके सो इन दिस वट वी हैव सीन दिस एक्सपेक्टेशन इज बेसिकली दिस देर इज दिस लीनियरिटी सो हाउ विल दिस चेंज इफ वी हैव ई ऑफ एक्स एंड नाउ इफ सम हाउ दिस रैंडम वेरिएबल एक्स गॉट चेंज लाइक दिस ए एक्स प्लस बी ओके इफ यू नाउ वॉन्ट टू कंप्यूट द एक्सपेक्टेशन इट विल बी इक्वल टू ए ई ऑफ एक्स प्लस बी दिस प्रॉपर्टी बेसिकली मैथ इन मैथ में इज कॉल लीनियरिटी I don't want to get into details of what non-linear linear is, but just see that you you, you had you did nothing basically. You just took this a out of the expectation. Okay, you took this b out of the expectation. Okay, you treated them just as constants. So when you treat them as you can you can just get this. You you got the new expectation. That's the that's the update expectation. How many of you understood the property of linearity? So what are the main topics that we studied in our expectation? We saw what an expectation is first. And I think we had a detailed discussion on this expectation, and we saw what definition was that definition of expectation. Then one thing that we saw is uh, the function of that. If you have a function and you had the, and we had to compute the expectation of that, okay, we saw that also. So we call that an expectation of a function of a random variable. So basically, expectation is this is computed for a random variable. Then we saw expectation of a function of random variable of random variable, and now we just briefly saw. uh linearity regarding expectation linearity of expectation so the first formulation over here that you saw is so exact expectation means for the discrete we are talking about discrete random variables that was summation of x p of x okay so this was pmf and this is over all x so this was expectation of x so then the second topic that we studied was expectation of function of x if we had a function g of x we said expectation of g of x that means if you have a random variable x and we apply some function onto that so what is the expectation equal to so then we saw that we just will we'll use the original pm of x and then just compute the g of x for each value of x so this was the definition of expectation this is computing the expectation of a uh, function of random variable expectation of function of random variable i'm just writing in the short form and then we saw the linearity of expectation if we have a random variable x and somehow We, we multiplied and added something, some constants over there. So how is the expectation getting changed? So basically, this is showing a linear property. So that is something like this. Okay, so this is called as linearity. This summarizes for the whole thing of expectations. What expectations tell you? So expectations basically give you a rough figure, a ballpark. This is a this value gives you a summary of a random variable, somewhat a summary. Now this expectation has some problems. so it has some problem let's suppose i'll take some data suppose we have a random variable x and we have a random variable y i have two random variables i have random variable x and y let's suppose this random variable takes value minus 5 comma 0 comma 5 okay and this random variable takes value minus 1 comma 0 comma 1 so here the probability is let's suppose probability mass function is something like this so here the probability of this is 1 by 3 1 by 3 and 1 by 3 similar with this 1 by 3 One by three and one by three. These are two random variables. They are pretty different. If you see these random variables are pretty bit different. So what I said is, I said the expectation somehow summarizes it. Expectation somehow summarizes the results. It somehow summarizes something and tells you something about the random variable or something about the distribution. So now if I compute the expectation over here. So if I compute the expectation. So let's suppose we we'll compute the expectation of x, e of x. So what will that be equal to? Because you know now now that you'll just Minus five multiplied by one by three plus zero multiplied by one by three plus five multiplied by one by three. Okay, so this is this is equal to zero. Again, if I say expectation of y, that's also equal to minus y multiplied by one by three plus zero multiplied by one by three plus one multiplied by one by three. This is also equal to zero. Now you see that expectation of x and expectation of y is similar, but you see that this data is Entirely different. You can see that if I just plot this data, let's suppose this is my data. 
so you can see that minus 5 will be somewhere over here plus 5 let's suppose is somewhere over here and 0 is somewhere over here let's suppose then 1 will be somewhere over here and plus 1 will be somewhere over here okay this is the data so you see this data this over this purple this purple and blue is entirely different data but if you just summarize the result with the expectation expectation is a good thing so many other times what will happen is it will tell you some sudden tendency but the problem uh, appears when you have something like this so when you have data for which you can get the same expectation but the data is entirely different random variables entirely say something different let me give you a physical example also okay let's suppose you want to invest uh, uh, invest in some game or you want to gamble somewhere so what will happen let's suppose uh, with, with probability 1 by 2 you will uh, win some 1 million dollars let's suppose 1 million dollars and with probability 1 by 2 you lose 1 million dollars that's one scenario okay that is let's suppose random variable x it takes value plus 1 million comma minus 1 million with probability 1 by 2 and 1 by 2 then y is equal let's suppose now we have you have 5 rupees 5 rupees and here you have well, you win this with probability 1 by 2 and you lose with probability 5 5 rupees with probability 1 by 2 so this can take value 5 and minus 5 and this can take value basically 1 million I will I will just write 1 million is 10 to the power 6 ok 1 million is this and this is 10 to the power Six. So this you can lose this much or you can uh, win this much so here you can win 5 or you can lose minus 5 so if you compute the expectation see it, it is a game now see it if you are investing in stock market or if you are gambling so there you will see that so here if you compute the expectation of x it will be 0 ok expected return basically will be 0 so here also expectation of y will be 0 but where will you invest if you are a logical person why do you think you will invest coming to Amir Amir why do you think you will invest or which game will you play? Will you play this game or this game? What do you say, Rian? Okay, you mean you will play this second second game? Okay. So the rationale behind that is probably here the winning. If you if you even lose, you will only lose minus five. Okay. If you the worst case is that you lose minus five minus five dollars or minus five rupees, whatever it is. Let's suppose we also keep it rupees. So this is rupees. Now you see that here risk is high, risk is high, risk is low in this case and risk is high in this case. So in the first case risk is very high. That's why we call that there is a high volatility in the market. So volatility is this. So that's how mathematically if you, if you, if you are active in stock market, if the stock prices change a lot, there is a high variability. So we call this, uh, this stock as very high, this is volatile. Okay. Now for this I need number. I need, I need a number to sort of uh, get the hang of this number. I, I want to quantify it. So I want to quantify quantify this risk now. This, I'm just giving an example. It can be, uh, I'm just showing you a gambling game or stock market. So how to quantify this? Now you can see that in both these, the expected return, ex expectation is zero. Okay. Now the best thing that Rian said that he'd uh, invest in here. If he is forced to invest, so he'll invest in here. Why? Because the l l less risk is involved here. Risk is low. So here there is a high chance of risk. Okay. A high chance of risk basically means uh, you may lose thing. You may lose one million dollar. Okay. Now how to quantify this risk? Then we come up with something called as variance. See the need of the concept. In need dekho yahan pe. Tum ye mat dekho ki concept aya kyun. See the need. So both of these variables had, had the same expectation. Okay, hamare pe expectation same tha. But somehow we had to come up with a number which will quantify this risk. Ya hum log kya dekhenge yahan pe agar tum dekhoge. Yahan pe is blue data mein spread zada. There we had more spread. If you see the spread was more. So if you see this purple data the spread is less. Okay. So one thing is in that in terms of stock market, in terms of uh, these financial gains or losses, I said a risk. Okay, there will be risk involved. But in the second scenario, what I said is spread. If I, if I just had data, I'll see which data is more spreaded. Okay, where is the more variability? Okay, that's why we call this variance. So now in order to quantify this spread, in order to quantify this uh, spread risk or, or anything that is related to this, we came up with the concept variance. Okay, now you see this data. So we had data like this. So this is 5 and this is also 5 this is minus 5 this is 5 this is 0 and over here this is my plus 1 this is 1 and this is this is minus 1 this is plus 1 okay this is 0 now we have to come up with a number which will tell you how that that number should be higher 
for, for where this spread is high. So for this blue, that number should be high. So we, I am not defining the variance directly. I am telling you what what is the property that this number should have. So if spread is high, if spread is high, that number should be high. Okay, whatever number we call, I call that number variance. Let's call that number variance V. So that number should be high. Okay, or in, in terms of risk, if the risk is high, that number should be high. Because what we are trying to do, we are trying to quantify this risk or we are trying to quantify the spread. How to do that? Do you have any idea how, how can we come up with, with such a number so that if I, I have been given this data of minus 5, 0, 5, okay, uh, and then whatever I have been given. So for this data and for this data, minus 1, 0 and 1. So I should sum up, somehow use these numbers and use these numbers for this. I should get number, let's suppose A. I'll get a number, suppose B. And this A should be greater than B. There are different ways to do this. Okay, A simple way what I can do is I can compute mean. I'll say, okay, this minus 5, 0 and 5. I'll compute mean. Okay, what I'll do, I'll compute mean. And after that, what I'll do is I'll take each of this number. I'll take each of this number and I'll subtract the mean. I'll do, for example, whatever number is. Let's call this x1, x2 and x3. So I'll compute mean, let's call that mean is equal to mu, or I'll compute expectation first, or I'll call this E of X. Okay, then I'll subtract, because that's what variability will tell me. I want to see how how the how spread the data is. If this is the central tendency, if mean is telling me the center, then I'll see how far are other points from the center. So don't you think that this satisfies this, uh, satisfies this condition that I want to get, uh, the basically quantify the risk or spread, I want to see if the spread is high, that means my number should get high, 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 higher value. That is variance should get the higher value. So what I'm saying is that I know that expectation or the mean value gives me the central tendency of the values. Now I want to see how spread is the data. I'll see e how, how far is each data point from the center. That's what I'll do here. So I'll see this x1, x2, x3. These are the point data points. So I'll say that I'll compute this expectation or mu. I'll now see how far each number is from the, let's suppose from the mu. We'll say x1 minus mu plus x2 minus mu plus x3 minus mu, okay? And then I'll average it out. I'll divide it, let's suppose, by 3 over here. I'm summing all these numbers. I'm first seeing how far is each data point away from the mean, away from the mean number. That will give me some of spread. And I'll not just keep it like this because these functions, if I just see, so there'll be negative and positive. I want to do some absolute value of that. I just want to see how far is it. So I have to apply mod. Okay, but you know that modulus function, it's not a good function in terms of differentiability. We'll see that in the calculus. That's why we use the square number over here. If I just used uh, these things as it is, then the effect of negative numbers and the effect of positive numbers, they'll somehow cancel out each other. But what I want is, I just wanted to see how far is the number from the central tendency? How far is the number from the average number? So for that, I can use modulus. But the problem with the modulus is that once you bring in these modulus, it's... Uh, basically uh, not differentiable at certain points. So if you see the function of more, it's something like this. Okay, then it becomes problem for the differentiability. So these, uh, the, the function x square function. So this function is a really smooth function. It's uh, continuous over the whole, over whole minus infinity to infinity. Okay, and then it's, we can easily differentiate it also. That's why we brought in this square. Now here, I'll call this as variance. This I'll call it variance. How many of you understood this point? Now I want to see the spread. So how I saw the spread is I just do the mean value or mean, I, I took all the data points and saw how far are from they from the mean value. I, I took average of that number. And if you see this now, so if you have this minus five, zero five, and let's suppose, what is the mean of these numbers? I think it's zero. So it will be minus five square plus five square divided by three. So you'll get uh, 50 divided by three. That's around uh, 16 point something. So now if you have this minus one, zero and one. Now again, now the mean value is zero mean value is zero so again you'll get one square plus one square minus one square divided by three so you'll get one by three so one by three zero point six so for the one data if the expectation of x was zero and expectation of y was also zero okay but you saw that mean or uh, variance of variable x we got uh, the x is let's suppose data minus five zero and five and this is minus one zero and plus one the variance of x now was, I think, 16 point something. And variance of y now came out to be 1 by 3, that is 0 0.33. Now you see that this number is low, and this number is pretty high. And this tells us that this x random variable has high variance. Now it summarizes, now we have two things in our hand. The first thing was mean. So what mean told us? That there is a central tendency. So if you see the data, and if you see a lot of samples. So if somebody tells you a mean, you'll say that, okay. It will give you a ballpark figure. 
as I said that in terms of company, you usually ask what is the average CTC and even when we were getting placed in IIC, so there the whole point was, okay, what is the average CTC you guys had in the last year? Okay, and we were getting about how good that year was. Let's suppose when I was in IIC, so we got somewhere around 32 point something lakhs per annum as average uh, CTC for the company. So we're saying that, okay, this season was pretty good. And now if you see that now uh, data is coming and probably it will be somewhere around 25 LPA. So this was our mean value. This is our average value. This gives the, us the ballpark figure. If I just told you one number. I gave you that the average CTC in year 2021 was 32 point some lakh. So you'll say, that, okay, uh, actually that year went very well. So now even if you see that, uh, that if this was in 2023, let's suppose. Now in 2024, this is the, uh, the average salary that, that people got. Now you can see that this has, uh, the average got decreased somewhat. There has been some problems in the market. So just one number tells you a lot of story. That's what the expectation did. But now you want to see, uh, was there variability? Was how variability was there? So if all the people got number like salaries like 32, some got 35, some got let's suppose uh, 25, 26. And but if you see in this uh, 25 salary, so let's suppose 25 is the mean, but somebody got one crore, okay, and somebody even got let's suppose only 10 lakhs, 10 LPA. So if you see this average only 25, but you see the variability is high. So vo volatility is very high. This is variable. So there we have high variance, high spread. Okay, and here if you see this, the points were concentrated at, at, at like only in a certain region. So here if you see the spread was less. Spread was less. Now if you only give me two numbers, I can tell you a lot of story. So if you say, let's suppose uh, in IIC, the expected uh, CTC, let's call it, expected CTC was 25 lakhs per annum for year 2024. And variance CTC was, uh, let's suppose some number. So variance could be, some number six we can just com compute some number a let's give it a number proper number some 10 or something okay plus minus 10 basically tell so you can tell that 25 so people got around this so plus 10 over here that's 35 and this minus over here that's uh, that is 15 okay so I, I i got to know about a lot of things now i can somehow summarize that you see this is the summary now you, you don't need to see the all details. You don't need to see uh, for the for each person what's the salary they got and how is the college performing. Give me only these two numbers. Tell me what is the expectation CTC in 2024 and tell me what is the uh, variance in CTC. How much spread was there? If, if you tell me these two numbers, I can get a rough guess. So if there is a very high variance, that tells you that somehow the market was kind of volatile and some people got really good salary, probably two, three people got a few crore salary. But all, all in all, if mean is less, that means uh, that uh, very less people got a high salary okay so uh, if there is something like this uh, 25 lpa and then there is just variance is one one lakh is the variance that means 25 is the mean so uh, the variability is 26 and 24 somewhere around there in this ballpark everybody lies in here okay now only these two numbers they summarize a lot of details so how many of you understood what is expectation what is uh, variance kis kis ko samajh aaye? Now I told you intuitively what is the meaning of variance, what is the meaning of expectation. Now we'll see how mathematically we define them because we define mathematically what expectation is. Now we'll also define mathematically for discrete random variables. We'll also define mathematically how the variance is defined. Okay, so you, you can have two ways basically. What I have seen is people or even books, they consider two ways. The first thing is they'll have a perfect sample. Bear with me for a few seconds. Uh, things might not make sense for let's suppose couple of minutes what a perfect sample is if you want to compute a variance so for that you have to have a perfect sample then you can compute the variance let's suppose somebody will tell you i have uh, let's suppose some data so he'll give you some probability mass function of the data okay for probability mass function of the data and if a data is there is some data and correspondingly it is the probability mass function is given or you have a random variable x and from that you have probability mass function basically here what you will do is you'll have data you'll compute the probability mass function okay you'll have random variable and correspond to that you'll be given probability mass function for a discrete random variable let's suppose you have this probability of head and probability of tail is given to you let's suppose if this is given one by two and this is given one by two so what is the perfect sample so a perfect sample will be if you make 10 trials if you make 10 flipping of the coins so you will get five times head and five times tail something like this head 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 and head let's suppose these are five times head and now we'll put tails tail 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 and tail this again one more tail so this is the perfect sample 
Why is it a perfect sample? Because we said that PMF says the probability mass function is that probability of head is 1 by 2 and probability of tail is 1 by 2. But you know that if you keep on performing the experiment, rarely you will get something like this. Rarely you will get that probability of head was half and probability of tail was half. Half the times head appeared, half the times tail appeared. Because you know that even if the coin is not biased, still you will have to flip it a lot of times in order to get closer to this 1 by 2, 1 by 2. Okay, the frequent test approach. Basically, if I flip coin one time, you'll get head. If I flip coin second time, again, you can get head. If I flip third time, again, you can get head. There's a possibility you can get head. But what's the perfect sample? The perfect sample is that if you made some trials, let's suppose here we made 10 trials. So, and our probability mass function said is that the probability of head is 1 by 2 and the probability of tail is 1 by 2. The perfect sample should reflect some the, some, somehow the same meaning. So, here if you see, out of these 10 trials, head came 5 times. This is probability of head. Similar, out of these 10 trials, the tail came to be 5 times. Now you see that 1 by 2 is the probability of head and 1 by 2 is the probability of tails. This is the perfect sample. So if you have this perfect sample, if you somehow have the perfect sample, you can easily compute the variance. So what you, what can you do is, so you have this perfect sample. Let's suppose x1, x2, x3, x4 and x5. Let's suppose you have been given probability mass function and now you what, what you did is, you just according to that probability mass function, you took a perfect sample. So now you want to compute variance. Usually variance is represented by sigma square. Okay. This is how variance is represented. So how we can compute this? You can just average uh, average this out. Let's first compute the average. You'll call that mu. So you know how to compute average. Average just sum them up, divide by the total number of entries. So you'll get this average. This is called as mean or average. Let's call this mean. Okay, there is a quote which you will see people wearing shirts in ISC. They have written that I am not mean. I am just average. Okay. So these are the quotes that usually people you will see mathematicians wearing. So my average bacha hum, but par main mean nahi hum. But in the mathematics, mean and average probably like have the same meaning. Okay, and you might have seen the roads just as uh, like story. You might have seen the roads uh, people wearing don't drink and drive. So I have seen uh, people wearing shirts uh, don't drink and derive. Okay, because in the IIC you have to derive the things all the time. So they say don't drink and derive. Coming back to the topic, so what I was saying that if you have a perfect sample like this, which describes whatever your PMF is, it is saying exactly the same picture whatever your PMF is saying. So how you can compute the variance? So I said, I told you that, just compute the mean. Take the E data point, x1 minus mu whole square and sum, uh, sum over all of these things, x2 minus mu whole square and so on till x5 minus mu whole square and divide by the total number of, this is less suppose 5. So I can write this formulation like this, summation of x i minus mu whole square, i goes from 1 to n divided by n, this is sigma square, this is variance. So here, but what we assumed here is that we have the perfect sample, but you know that in reality, perfect sample is only achieved when we get more and more and more and more data. We had this thorough discussion when we were discussing about the expectations. Okay, so actually PMF, actually we have some process, we have an underlying probability distribution. So this probability distribution, nobody knows. So if you keep on sampling, keep on sampling, keep on sampling, so whatever the probability distribution you'll get, that will somehow relate to this now. So okay, we, that time we said that we'll sample, that's called a sample probability distribution, this is called a population probability distribution. Okay, with uh, population PMF. And then since you sample more and more, this gets closer and closer to the actual probability distribution. You have some sampling probability distribution, you have some actual probability distribution because of the less data, they more or less won't agree. But the more data you will get, the more XP you will perform, somehow the actual uh, probability distribution will get revealed. Similarly in here, now you know that you won't have this perfect sample always. So how do mathematicians tackle with this problem? That's what average is even. So average and expectation. Almost they are similar number, the intuition is similar. But why do we compute expectation? Because expectation, we have an underlying fa factor that we do not know the distribution. Okay, that's why we compute the expectation. Because we don't have access to that PMF all, always. And in average, we consider that we have th that this data is our population, we we'll just compute the average. So expectation is computed where you do not know things. That's why average is there in statistics and in probability, what we have is basically expectation. Similarly, uh, for this variance, if you see this variance can be computed like this, but if you have a perfect sample, but you know now know that there is no perfect sample. You even can you even won't know if it's a perfect sample or not. So what we will do is we'll change this formulation. Okay, now we have a random variable x. For this random variable x, we want to compute variance of x. It's sometimes written as sigma square of x. 
you'll see both the notations. So what I can do is basically I'll take mu. So what is mu mean? This has an equivalent expectation of x. So take this x and subtract it with this expectation of x. Okay, and square it up and then take the average of that. This is this is actual the variance. Mathematically, this is the formula of variance. Again, read it in the poetry. I, I told you mathematics is poetry, read it. This basically was average. Okay, we wrote x i minus mu and then we wrote whole square divided by n and then we sum it over i goes from 1 to n. Okay, now this is for the perfect sample when you have a perfect sample with you. Now we do not have perfect sample. Okay, you have some underlying distribu hidden distribution that God on only God knows. So what happens here is, so I'll just re replace this mu with the expectation of x because you know that the expectation of x and mu basically carry the same meaning but the context is different. In one scenario, you know the sample. In the second scenario, you have some sample only. You don't have the population PMF. That's why we use this. So this value, it is remain the same. Okay, this is xi and here we took the whole whole values of x. Now you know that if, you, if I have to compute the mean, if I have to compute the average, so average again is this. So by average is computed by expectation. Okay, so the formula now boils down to e multiplied x, e expectation of, expectation of x minus expectation of x whole square. How many of you understood this? Wasn't it easy? Yes, sir. Okay, that's how even if you see the books, directly they'll come to this. They'll write e x minus e to the x whole square. They'll write like this and people will get scared. So what is it written? So basically the point is that you should know that the, the, this formulation is also the formulation. I think in the previous lectures when I discussed about variance, when we were doing some EDA expedited analysis, I exp explained you this formulation. This formulation is when you have samples. Okay, if you are computing it even even with the computers, you will probably more more or less use this this formulation. But when you are doing, let's suppose in the mathematical framework, you you you'll use this formulation. This is variance of x, or this is sigma square of x. There is one more term associated with this because this is square term. Now, in order to bring it on the scale, we call standard deviation. So we'll just under root this. We'll put a root on this a root of variance of x. So that's called a standard deviation. There's nothing new concept, it again measures the spread, it again measures the same things. So there is no new concept involved here. But you know that we put this square, square onto these terms. In order to get it on the same scale, so what we did is, original scale basically, we'll just remove this square. So how I can remove this square is by applying the square root. So we call this as a standard deviation. Okay, how many of you understood variance and uh, this expectation? Now mathematically, there are more things to talk about uh, uh, this variance. So what you can talk about variance is, is variance linear, uh, so let's suppose if I apply it, if I have a function of these, all all of these things can be thought now. That is your homework now. Your homework is that the first thing is whatever concept we saw in the expectation, we saw linearity of the expectation. Expectation was linear. You'll have to see if this is linear also. The, that's the first thing that you'll have to see. Okay. Second thing we'll see that if a random variable, if a function is applied onto a random variable, okay, then what is the variance of that thing? So how does that behave? You'll have to also check that. Okay, I, uh, make all in all every comparison and the second homework I would, I, I would give you. Now, you saw different random variables. You saw binomial random variable. Okay, you saw uniform random variable. Random variable, you saw binomial random variable. And I think you, what's the other thing that you saw? You, you did not saw the poison random variables there, poison random variable. Okay, for each of these random variables, PMF was defined. Okay, probability mass function was defined. Then the expectation was directly take this x and multiply it with PMF. Okay, that's the whole thing. PMF multiplied by x and this is how you compute the expectation. Now you have the formula. You know how to compute variance. So variance will be variance of x is expectation of take this random variable subtracted by expectation of x whole square and have the whole expectation of this. Can you do one thing? Can you compute for these random variables, whatever random variables we studied? Can you just compute, have their PDFs and just compute the expectation as well as variance for all of these random variables in discrete random variable? Okay, you, now I have given you two homeworks to do. The first work is, it won't be the part assignment, but you should do it. That's how you will thoroughly understand what expectation and what variance is. So I said that we studied about discrete random variables. In that, we saw different types of random variables. Okay, now to summarize these discrete, to summarize this, we learned about two concepts. We learned about variance and expectation. You now know the definition of variance, you know the ex definition of expectations. Even for a random variable, the only thing that matters is probability mass function of that. Okay, probability mass function of a discrete random variable. So that, there you saw that, based on this probability mass function, we have binomial random variable. 
we have Bernoulli random variable also. We have uniform random variable. Okay. And uh, let's suppose we have Poisson random variable. We have geometric random variable. We have, we have something called hypergeometric random variable. We have something called beta distribution. There are a lot of these random variables. Okay. Only the only thing is that PMF gets changed. There is different PMF. The, how the probability is being given. That is that. That's what is the change in there. But all of these take random values. They take some discrete random values, and then uh, this probability is defined onto them. Now your first homework is that I gave you that the first homework is you have to see if this variance for this variance because we saw expectation. We thoroughly studies expectation. This we thoroughly studied. Now I just told you what variance is. You just have to see if variance if the if, if this variance is linear. But do not look at the books, please. Do not get biased. And just see mathematically if it follows. You just have to take, let's suppose if the variance of x was somewhat, uh, some variance of x, if now I multiply ax plus b, what will the variance of this term now? You'll have to check that. Okay. And then we'll have to see variance of function of a random variable. Function of a random variable. That's your one homework. The second homework that is there, is that for all these discrete random variables, you will have to compute variance and you'll have to compute expectation for these. How many of you will be able to do this? You just have to compute the variance and expectation for these. And this, these are the two homeworks for you. Read about this variance and see if it is linear, what, what will happen for the function of this. Okay. And after that, just compute the variance and the expectation for all of these random variables. Can you do this? Now, what we saw is we saw discrete random variable. And for that, there are two important functions. One is called as probability mass function. And now there is a second important function that's called as cumulative distribution function CDF. So even in a continuous random variable, there will be this CDF. So but there is one more thing that's called as probability density function PDF. Okay, I think this will be that uh, probably tomorrow or day of tomorrow, this will be the last topic that we'll handle this and we'll be done with the distributions. Today we'll cover what is CDF first. Okay, what is CDF now? What is cumulative distribution function? So what is PMF? So what PMF was basically, PMF was a function which was taking a value of a random variable. So this is we are studying in discrete random variable setting. So we had x and we had let's suppose x takes value 1, 2, 3, 4, something like this. So what PMF was, PMF was nothing but a function. Okay, which was mapping these values. What were the values that a random variable takes? It was mapping it to the probability. Let's suppose PMF of one. So we wrote it like this PMF of value X that it takes value one. So we gave, let's suppose one by four PMF of two. This is let's suppose one by four again. So let's suppose this is a random uniform random variable. So that's what PMF is. Now what CDF basically is, so CDF you will not define it like, you will not, CDF again is basically, it's a, it's a function, but this function operates differently. So here you saw that this function operated on these numbers, 1, 2, 3 and 4, this operated on that each of these outcomes. Now what you, what you, what you see is that, there is a word cumulative, okay. So cumulative is whatever has happened previously, we will also take that into account. You must have seen CGPA, cumulative your GPA, whatever your GPA is, community is whatever has been done so far. We'll also take that into account. That's why you, in your mark sheet, there has been written this GPA, grade point average. Usually we talk about GPA, but at the end, you will talk about CGPA. What is the CGPA? Cumulative grade point average. So it will basically take the past things also into consideration because you have semesters, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. You have eight semesters. So now you got some GPA in the semester. You got some GPA in this semester. Now in your mark sheet, what will happen is, so they'll have to combine the previous effect also. They'll somehow have to see what was the effect of the previous semester. Let's suppose here you got 9.0. Okay. And here you will got some 9.8. So they'll not just write this GPA now. They'll write CGPA. What is the community GPA? Even within the subjects also. So each subject, you will get some grade point. You'll get some points. So then you will cumulatively somehow take the pre account of all these things that happened previously for the semester or for all the subjects, you'll have this CGPA. You will somehow combine them together. Okay. Cumulative. Somehow you, this is a, this is somehow, somehow aggregation, somewhat you are aggregating things. So that's why this CDF is. CDF again is some sort of a function. It's a function, but in, in this discrete random variable, it's a step function. So in this discrete random variable, CDF is a step function. We'll see what step function is. Okay, so CDF is a function which basically takes uh, in account it's some it is cumulating something. 
okay it's some it, it, it's something aggregation it's aggregating something so how it is written so let's suppose we write probability x takes value 0 so this is what is called as a pm a probability mass function because it takes a particular value and for that it gives you some certain value let's suppose now what if i say that what is the probability that x takes value less than 1 now you see that let's suppose our x takes value uh, 0 let's suppose we'll have minus 1 comma 0 comma 1 comma 2 comma 3 so these these are the, this is the value that random variable takes so if i say that probability x is equal to 0 so i just am concerned about what will happen to this okay how, what is the probability i'll get to i'll give to this outcome what what what's the probability that x will take value 0 but what if i say that what is the probability that x will take value 0 and 1 so isn't it equal to something like this so probability that x will take value minus 1 plus probability that x will take value 0 Okay, in, in this scenario, there are only two numbers which are less than 1. That is this minus 1 and 0. I am just adding these things up. So, whatever this value is there, whatever the value, this is there. This is called as cumulative distribution function, CDF. This is my CDF. That's the simplest definition you can have. Okay, so what basically, how, how I can write it? So, if I have f of a, okay, so what is this f of a basically? So, this f of a is telling me what is the PMF? Okay, what is the PMF that the, uh, or I can say the function. So, howsoever I wrote this function, I said, what is the probability? What is the probability that my random variable x takes value less than or equal to a? So, here it was just less than. So, if I just add equal to also, so here one more term will get added. So, one more term will be plus probability x is equal to 1. Okay, now how I write the CDF. So, this is my CDF, this over here. So, I'll write my CDF function to be a function like this f of a. If I write f of a, this basically tells me, this is equivalent to what is the probability that your random variable x, it can be random variable x, y, z, whatever it is, your random variable takes the value less than or equal to a. Now you know that this basically can be expanded. So I can say that this is just the summation of x is less than or equal to a. Okay, so uh, what should I sum it over? I should sum it over probability of x. So this x should take the value less than or equal to a. It will sum basically the probability mass functions. Okay, now this is a, this is one value and I'll just sum up through all the values. That's what I did over here. How many of you understood probability uh, this cumulative distribution function? There's nothing special about it. Just we're cumulating. We're somehow some aggregating these things together. So that this is what. Uh, why is it a step function? Now let's see why it is a step function. So why is it a step function? If you see this. So let's suppose we'll make a graph. We'll make a graph like this. Okay. So now let's suppose values are values taken are 1, 2, 3, and 4, something like this. Let's suppose our random variable x takes values 1, 2, 3, 4. This is the values that our random variable may take. Okay. So this is my axis. Now if I have to compute probability, so how, how do I compute probability? Let's suppose these are my properties. Here we have properties, let's suppose some uh, 1 by 4 suppose 3 by 4, something like some probabilities, this is probability, I won't write the exact values because I'll have to sum up, up, these values should basically sum up to 1, so I have to carefully think about the probability. So this is basically probability of this x. So this is my value x, so this, these are my values x from here, so these values are probabilities of x. So if I write the PMF, you know that we have drawn that histogram sort of thing, we just, uh, we were drawing something like this. Okay, this is what was our probability mass function. Okay, now what will happen is, so suppose now I have to compute the CDF. So since it takes value 0, so what will what will uh, happen is basically, so what is the probability that uh, if I write uh, CDF, so I'll write CDF like this, f of 1, so f of 1 is CDF. So the value it takes values less than or equal to 1, that's only 1, so it'll take this value, let's suppose. Okay, what if I write f of 1.5? Because it does not take uh, any value except 1 in this 1.5. So still 1.5 will take the value of 1. Because there is only one value involved. That's 1. F of 1 was equal to 1. So basically that was equal to probability of 1. If I write F of 1.5. So this is basically equal to probability of, of 1. And whatever number is less than 1.5. But there is no number except 1 which is less than 1.5 in this variable. 1, 2, 3 and 4. There is only 1. So you will see that till 2 you will get this. Okay. So one for, for one, it, the probability was this much. And till two, you got this. And on two, I'll put this open interval. While, while I put while I put this, because suddenly there will be a jump. Okay, this this value is not for two. So for two, the value will be somewhere like this, somewhere like here. Okay, this will add now. So one plus two. So if I write f of two, so it will be f of one plus f of two now. 
Okay, that's why I added. I I, I have I have to add this much. Initially, the probability was this. Okay, now I have to add this much also. So that's why for two, the probability will start from here. Now, what is the CDF of two point five? So there are now two numbers are there. One comma two are the only numbers which are less than this two point five. It's considering this a discrete random variable. So again, you will see that. So from here till three, the values will be again the same. Okay, at point three, it will again suddenly jump. Why now? One, two, and three will be included. So one, two, and three will be included now. So you will have for three, you will again add up things, and this will be something like this. At four, you will again see it will be a sudden jump. So this is what a step function is. This is a step function. So CDF of a discrete random variable, if you see, is a step function. And step, if you see, it can be variable. It depends on the probability that each of these. What is the probability of each of these? You just keep on adding these things. So here, I just start from one, one point two, one point five, one point six, whatever the number was. There was only one number that was that in in this one, two, three, four. There was only that one number that was less than equal to one point five. So that was one. Okay, that's why from this to two, we got this same number. We got the same probability. This is my probability of x. Similarly. When I came to two, now there are two numbers, one and two, so that's why I added the probability over here. But after this two till three, again the line remains straight. Okay, on three I added the probability of one plus two plus three. That's why it's again it's always this increasing step function. You see this increasing step function. Here it was something that we increased. First here, then here, then here, then here, then here. How many of you understood why is it a step function? Why is a CDF a step function in discrete random variable? You understood this? So what is CDF? You understood what is CDF also? Okay. So now, now again, I'm I'm summarizing it continuously so that you do not uh, forget this. We were at random variables, discrete random variable, continuous random variable. Okay. So here we have two concepts now: probability mass function, and now we have here probability. Here we have cumulative distribution uh, function CDF. Okay, and we have different types. So types basically they'll change this CDF and PDF. that we saw two things which are common to both of these things that's expectation and variance that's all there is to talk about this discrete random variable there a lot of things can be taught again but basics i think now you have all the fundamentals from which you can read these material uh, from the book on your own and you can solve the problems on your own now we'll move on to continuous random variables if we have time i think uh, i'll stop the recording here over here so tomorrow we'll finish this continuous random variables